Hello, in this video I want to talk about uh, trig equations. Um, I'm just going to start with a really simple example in this video. Let's say we're given something like um, cos theta equals one half. Actually, let's we can make it a, a bit more complicated. Let's say we get uh, we're given something like two cos uh, theta equals negative uh, root two, right? Now, the reason I refer to this as a basic example is because there's no phase shift or anything, right? There's, we, we're not given something like 2 cos uh, 2 theta plus 5 equals negative root 2, right? The, in this example, the graph is going to be uh, fairly simple relative to y equals cos theta, the basic cos graph. Um, and actually, maybe that's a good place to, to start uh, and emphasizing in sort of a deeper connection because there are numerous ways in which one can solve trig equations and some people prefer graphical methods uh, relying on symmetry, the, the, the marvelous concept of symmetry that reappears in maths and physics uh, in all different places and parts of maths and physics and so if we just draw a simple graph of a basic um, cosine graph to say y equals cos theta we know it looks something like this. It starts up here and it comes down and it comes back up and it comes down. I can maybe draw a little bit better than that. Let's just say it comes down like that. It comes back up and so on, right? And it goes back down and it goes back up. Now, let's say, let's just put an arbitrary point. Let's say right there. Okay, just some arbitrary point. And for the sake of it, this example, let's just call it negative root two. Let's say that value is negative root two. Right? You can say you can mark this as y and you can mark this axis as x. So you can think of it as sine and cos. Uh, it doesn't matter however we want to think about these axes. But um, so in this case, uh, right here at this point, our solution, our value is negative root two. But we know through symmetry that there's going to be another solution right on this side because if we draw just uh, some imaginary line, just dotted line right across, it's our first solution. It's going to meet the curve on this side as well, right? At this point. So that's our second solution in this interval. Uh, for, for y equals cos theta, with no transformations or anything, we know that this point here is 90 degrees. We know that this point here, this minimum point, this is 180. If I mark that in, it's 180. And we know that this point here is 270, right? 270. So in taking a graphical approach, if we solve this equation and we get our first solution and we find that it's at this point whatever that is we haven't calculated it yet but it's going to be somewhere in here um, we can also find this solution by using symmetry because we know once we have this value the value um, uh, meaning the angle between the 90 and this solution we can just add that to 180 and we're going to get this solution right here and then for if our interval is much bigger than this say you know, our graph keeps going up and down and up and down and we need another solution over here. I mean, we can just basically then just extend that logic to multiples of 360, right, or, or, or 2 pi. And that's, that's a, a one graphical method using symmetry. I prefer to, I, I tend to default to algebra. That's just what I do uh, in most cases. Uh, and so in this case, let's say we want to evaluate or total evaluate this equation at where theta is... Um, greater than zero but less than or equal to 360 degrees. Let's just say that this is our interval. Uh, so the first thing we want to do to solve to get our first solution is we want to isolate this cos theta on the left hand side. So we divide by two, both sides, right? It's this uh, easy enough operation. So we get cos theta equals negative root two over two. Uh, now we want to take the inverse. We need to find theta, of course. So we want to get take the inverse. So we get theta equals arc cos of negative root two over two. And if you input that into your calculator, you're going to get uh, 135 degrees. Okay, so that's our first solution. But there may be more than one solution in this interval. Uh, and so the way that I would think about it is I tend to picture a phaser. And again, if you're familiar with the unit circle, then it's essentially, I mean, you're building off the same thing, right? So if you're picturing a phaser, we, we know our first solution is 135 degrees. 
We also know that cos is negative. Uh, and if you know the values of your trig functions uh, uh, in relation to the unit circle, right, we know that cos is positive on the right hand side of the on the right hand side of the, the y axis, let's we call this the y axis. We know cos is negative on the left hand side of the y axis, and likewise for sine, it's positive, right, in the vertical uh, above the x axis, and it's uh, negative in the vertical below. And then for tan, we of course know that tan is positive in the first quadrant, and it's going to be positive in the third quadrant, and so on. So in this case, cos is negative, it's set to negative root 2. So we know our first solution, we can just deduce logically that it's going to be right here. Okay, this, and we've already calculated it, of course. So this is 135 degrees like this. So if we picture a phaser, we're right here, basically. And this could be even modeled as a vector, right here. And this angle between uh, this line, this we want to call it a vector, uh, and the x-axis, we just call it alpha. So to find the second solution, well, if there is a second solution, it's going to have to be down here. Right? Because it, it can only be on the left-hand side of the y-axis because cos is negative. So it's going to have to be here. So if we call that alpha 1. Let's just call this alpha 2 for the sake of it. There can be no more solutions in this interval 360 degrees. Because if we go around, and maybe I, I'll just change the color quickly, magenta. If we go around, just again, picture a unit circle or a phaser. I tend to picture a phaser. But if we go around like this, like this, just one revolution, right? There's only going to be two solutions. We've just deduced there's only going to be two solutions. So how do we find that second solution? Well, the way I would do it really quickly is I I would just say okay, if we have if 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 we know that our first solution if we know it's 135 degrees, then I'm just going to say well what is alpha one? Uh, well uh, let's just say alpha sub one is going to be 180, right? 180 right here. That's 180 degrees or pi minus. Uh, 135 degrees and we're going to get 45 degrees and so therefore uh, and and maybe one can make the connection between the graphical method when we were looking at the symmetry of the graph uh, and this uh, <clears throat> this approach is where now <clears throat> to find alpha or a2 alpha sub 2 we're just going to say well it's going to be 180 plus 45 degrees Right, and that's going to give us what? That's going to give us 225. Okay, so we can therefore say theta equals uh, 100, uh, 135 degrees and 225 degrees. And it makes perfect sense. Um, again, just picture a phaser, right? And I'll draw it in a different color. As we go around here, and just up to, let's say, one complete revolution, we're going around like this like this and like this and we're going to one revolution well as we go around uh, the unit circle if you if you if you want to even imagine it that way where our sinusoid is taking form isn't it it's going to go like this and go like this and go like this and however many times we go around the circle we're just going to have this sinusoid um, and in this case it's cos right so um, we can draw that if I, I mean, it might be a bit hard to sketch it this way, but let's just try. It's going to be what something, if I should just cut it in half like that. It's going to be what, that's y equals cos theta, right? Just a rough sketch. And that's what we have here, right? As we move up to this point, a value of 90 degrees, cos is going to equal zero. So we're going to be right there. And then as we keep going to 180 degrees down to this point, cos is going, our value is going to be right there. And then 270, Going to be right there right and then 360 it's going to be all the way up there and so in our case we have that cosine of theta equals negative uh, root 2 over 2 and we found that it's 135 degrees now if this is 180 this is going to be 135 i'll just mark it like that just say it's 135 and so all we've done is we just also use symmetry but we just relied on algebra essentially right because we know that there's going to be another solution like this and we found that solution now in the next video I will um, work on a more complicated example that involves a phase shift and uh, requires one to essentially manipulate the interval in order to find all the correct values